All right, today we're going to be doing a review of... Actually, it's not a review. It's a how-to on how to set up a proper Crossfire configuration. I've seen a lot of people mess this up. It's a very simple process, but a lot of people do a few things that you're not quite supposed to do. It doesn't hurt anything, but it can degrade your performance or it can just be completely pointless. And now a few of those things would be like using true crossfire the crossfire bridges. It's the same thing in SLI. You don't use two when you're setting up two video cards. And yes, there's two spots for them on some cards, like these. These are rather outdated, but they're what I got right at the moment. Or at least what I'm using for a demonstration. But they have the two spots for a bridge. Now what that is for is for, say, a three- or four-way crossfire configuration. Today we're doing a two-way configuration. That's actually probably all I'm ever going to do, because, well, 4850s are outdated. And honestly, I don't see any reason to buy another one just to do a three- or four-way crossfire. It's useless. So I guess the first thing we're going to do is grab both of our cards. Just a second. I'll, I'll let you see them. They're pretty pretty. Pretty pretty jump jumps. Negativity. You gotta love it. But those are my cards. And here is my wonderful Scallywag X1, aka the Azurac Fatality Motherboard. I <clears throat> need to grab my light here. So we can actually see what in the world ooh, we are doing in here. It's a little bit bright. There we go. Alright. So, you grab both your video cards. I need a workbench so dearly, it's not even funny. But, alright. This here's the first card. This will be our top or primary card. I've already got the holes punched out because I've pushed them or taken them out and everything. But the first thing you want to do is make sure that the card is all the way in, seated, locked in, and ready to go. Then take your handy dandy screwdriver, and if you're like me, complete and total clutch, dropping stuff everywhere. Some cases have toolless PCI slots, others don't. This one doesn't, and I'm kind of thankful for that, because toolless slots do have a weird tendency to sag or just droop. The bigger your card, the more you should probably um, get a, or make sure that you can screw your video cards in. Now I put the second card in, and it's locked in, and there's usually a little tab right here that'll move and click. For some reason, mine didn't. Usually they do. But whatever, this thing's had more cards in it than, well, any other computer I found. But then once you get both cards in, it's really quite simple. Okay, now I'm going to show you the quick wrong way to do it because, well, I can because I had the stuff to do it. I got an extra crossfire bridge. If you're a silly goose and see one of these and think that that's usable for crossfire, it's not. It doesn't even fit on there correctly. That's an SLI bridge. Now, a lot of people wonder, do I put it on this way? Do I put it on that way? Well... It doesn't matter. You can put it on this one, you can put it on that one. Yet again, it doesn't matter. Now, you can take it, you can put one on there, and if you want to do it incorrectly, or just the silly way, you can put a second one on there. It really makes no difference whether you have one or two. Some say it gives a performance boost. I say, nay, it doesn't. And now, another thing that 
is always useful using PTI Express power connectors. I have many 6 plus 2 pin connectors. You simply slide it in until it clicks. Same thing with the other one. And it click. The cards are in there. They're all looking pretty. Now I guess the real main test would be putting power to it. Now you, <laughs> it's one of those things I don't do because I've done this so much. I know when the system has power and when it doesn't. But I always highly recommend that you unplug your tower before doing anything like this because you can always get that wonderful blue smoke and if you let that escape your entire system you might as well throw it out the window. If it's just one component that you can see smoking, pull the plug on it. Don't worry about pushing the power button. It's not going to save you. You pull the plug on it. As soon as one component starts smoking, you might save your life, or not really your life, but your system's life. You'll just have to replace that one particular component that was smoking. But, you see the blue smoke? You better get working on your checkbook, because you are going to be spending a little bit of money. See, these cards are really quiet right now. Honestly, I'm kind of glad of that. There's nothing in the BIOS you need to set up, or at least there shouldn't be. What you do need to do is go on to, in this case, AMD.com and find either the Catalyst drivers, or there's one other version out there, I'm not sure exactly what it is, or better yet, use the drivers that came with the video cards. They'll get you to a basic point of usability if they don't have <clears throat> the drivers that are fully updated, update them. There's always going to be a link in AMD drivers or drivers settings. Now, I skipped a pretty crucial step and, well, it's kind of a goofy thing, but plug in video card to the top card. You plug it into the bottom card and you're not going to get anything and you're going to be sitting here scratching your head like, what in the world is going on? But, for inside the case, we are done, Houston. Now, we go on the computer. I'm sorry, I just love my keyboard. <laughs> it's shiny. Then you go to start. I already got it. And Division Engine Control Center. That's the other one. And you get something like this. And if you have an AMD board or that's rather new, you should already have this. Then you go to your performance category. It should give you AMD Overdrive, AMD Crossfire X, and possibly CPU power if you have an AMD board. You go to AMD Crossfire X, you click on Enable Crossfire, you click Apply. <sighs> Give it a few minutes for it to pick everything up. There it goes. And you have just enabled Crossfire. Now you're using two video cards. This is one larger video card. Personally, I'm not a fan of these video cards, but they're what I have. Now that really won't tell you much, but then after you do that, you can go into AMD Overdrive, and you have the selection for the first video card, and as you can see, the temperatures of these cards is already up there. And that's a 45% fan. And with a lot of people, they say their video cards run either hot or just really loud, they're going to if you allow them to run at 100%. That card is only at 44%, but that's because it was disabled. That is the secondary video card. And that's these cards running at 100%. 
very noisy, and very quick. Actually. Give me just a moment. Turn those down. And that's how to set up Crossfire. At least a quick and easy way. Find your drivers, make sure they're updated. Otherwise, with Windows 7 and many other operating systems, you can get the classic black flash, where every now and then the screen will black or flash and it'll be black. Or white, or it can have fragmentation, pixelation, all kinds of issues that you just don't want. So I guess this is Blue Panther Death signing off for today. This is my review of the week.